Brazil is selling corn and soybean two years ahead. That's the first time that is happening. To explain this issue, we have Steve Kekia. He is a consultant in Malta, based in Malta, and the owner of Cereal Bar, with experience with several years in Brazil. Connected Farmer is your channel to keep you up to date with the latest trends in agriculture and livestock. If you like our content, please uh, subscribe and click the bell button and don't forget to like us. Steve, how are you today? Hi, it is fine, thanks. Hope everyone is okay. A bit hot here in Malta. We're in the peak of summer, three digit temperatures. Um, and obviously still trying to deal with the COVID problem. We're all worried about a possible second wave. Yes, and what's behind, in your opinion, this decision by Brazilian farmers to sell two years ahead for the first time? Well, I think in my opinion, as you, as you rightly said, this is the first time ever that farmers are selling so far ahead. Um, if you look at the world grain markets, um, prices are actually at quite low levels. A lot of uncertainty as regards demand, global recession, um, and Brazilian farmers were lucky this year because they had uh, the advantage of um, a weakening currency. The real has been weakening since, especially since the beginning of the year. And this gave them an advantage, a different condition to trade their products at actually um, record prices. So obviously, they, uh, if you take the soybean crop, for example, we are still in July, yet practically the whole 2020 soybean crop has been sold. A good part of the 2021 soybean crop has, been, has also been traded. And for the first time ever, we are seeing also deals being done. Obviously, it's still small volumes, but interesting volumes at interesting prices in Brazilian currency for the 2022 crop. And now the same is happening also for corn. Uh, corn is a very uh, corn is not such a, a liquid commodity like soybeans for Brazilian farmers, but this time round they're having good prices also in real. So that is prompting farmers to start trading their crop two years ahead. Do you think uh, that will happen more often or is just uh, this very favorable situation that is pushing farmers to sell really fast? Well, actually myself, I think it could be a, a new trend, you know, because um, there is a difference between the farmers in the south of Brazil and the farmers in the Midwest of Brazil. The farmers in the south are smaller farms um uh, they depend a lot on the cooperatives so the trading strategies are different and we are we are seeing a lot of forward sales uh, actually in the midwest brazil where the farms are huge are enormous and where farmers have to keep um have to take special attention to costs and they treat they treat the farm, they treat their looks exactly like business operation, uh, where you have your profit margins, you have your uh, the history of whatever up you're trading, and as soon as it, as it gives you profits, which are not normal, obviously they could take advantage of the situation. So this, this case of um, guaranteeing your costs um, is quite strong in the Midwest of Brazil, where the farmers are big and obviously the expenses are much higher. Again, we are speaking with Steve Kekia. He is a consultant and uh, he's the owner of Cereal Park, a, a company based in Curitiba, but uh, he is in Malta, in Europe. 
Steve, uh, how is how is the Safrinha harvest coming right now? Well, uh, at the moment, although we are in peak harvest harvesting season for Safrinha, the prices have remained steady in Brazil because uh, in some areas the the harvesting is considered as slow at the moment, so there isn't enough uh, product as expected. And now we, Brazil starts to export in great volumes. Um, approximately 50% of the Saprina crop has already been harvested in Brazil. It's actually the same average, the same five year average, but as we said before, farmers every year want to harvest earlier so that they can export quicker um, every year they need to export quicker so in comparison to last year actually harvesting is at a slower pace last year at the same time of uh, the same period the same time same time of the year brazil had, had already harvested about 75 percent of the crop so we have just got past the midway line and um, we had some weather issues but on the whole as a crop, as a production, Brazil is having quite a big, uh, a big crop, and expectations are that Brazil could export anywhere between 30 and 35 million tons, which is quite a big number for Brazil, but it's still lower than the record obtained last year, which was about 40, 41 um, million tons. Here we have to remember, Luis, that the Brazilian uh, uh, export season is different although brazil nowadays has a good number of ports which are uh, adequate for grain exports but at the same time they can't export corn and soybeans uh, uh, simultaneously so in the first six months of the year the focus on soybean exports and now in the second half of the year the focus will be on corn exports uh, we expect, uh, if, you, if you take a look at the port lineup, the vessel lineup, uh, Brazil should export around 5 million tons of corn this month, July, and perhaps 4 million tons of corn in, uh, in August. By September, Brazil would have exported around 12 million tons, so there's still a lot to go to reach the 30 million ton mark which is expected by the government or at least by most of the consulting agencies. And do you think that a significant volume of both corn and soybeans will be exported during this second uh, half of the year, given that the exports were too high till now? Well, uh, Brazil was exporting about 10, 11, 12 million tons of soybeans during these last months. This month of July, it should drop to about, uh, to about 5 million tons. So as we, dem as we start decreasing our soybean exports, we will have more space to put corn in the export line. And that should help the numbers, that should help Brazil reach high figures for corn. Because uh, as we said in the beginning, Brazil traded the soybean crop quite early this year, so there isn't much soybeans left. What's left to be exported is uh, contracts that have already been uh, done months before. So now there's more space, yes, to, to, to export corn in the coming months, uh, especially September, October, I know, and November, even though this will be a time where also the USA will be having the new crop and obviously competing quite well in the international market. What about the input purchases? Are you hearing something about the input purchases in, in South of Brazil? No, there's nothing special going on. Obviously, farmers are worried because if the rate of exchange is favorable for Brazilian exports, on the other hand, it's not so favorable for imports. It makes imports more expensive. So, but... Um, uh, uh, the, the, the profit margin that farmers are having this year and probably next year, whether it's for soybeans or corn in Brazil, means that they can absorb 
these higher costs and farmers are uh, obviously um, uh, not putting all their eggs in one, ba in one basket they're accompanying the market and doing their input costs input purchases at a slow rate but obviously we all know that due to the domestic prices in brazil most probably next year or at least um, in the next planting season which starts anywhere around um, september in brazil uh, we'll probably see an increase in soybean area and also an increase in corn area um, down in brazil steve kekia is speaking from malta thank you thank you very much <laughs>